The coast of southern Namibia is a desolate place. But even desolation has a beauty to it. And there's something to be said for the adventure of traveling through such places. That's why eight teams are taking their 4x4s and heading out into the dunes. The goal? To drive 410 kilometers up the coast from Luderitz to Wolfus Bay. The adventure starts in Luderitz. Founded as long ago as 1883, the town grew to become a trading center in the early 20th century before gradually declining as the mining operations moved elsewhere. These days, the town has reinvented itself as a tourist destination due to its close proximity to the nearby diamond mining ghost town of Kolmanskorp. Only 10 kilometers inland from Luderitz was a thriving diamond mining town before being abandoned in 1956 when the inhabitants left in search of further diamond fields to the south. It is also the first stop on this adventure. We all lined up to get our permits and get breathalyzed before heading north into the sand. At this old mine, everyone stopped to let their tires down. 1.2 bar seemed to be the general consensus. It's incredible to see how the sand is slowly reclaiming the mine. Tour leader Werner Skarp took the time to give a driver briefing and explain where we are and are not allowed to drive. You had to go around it, that's why everybody has to go around it and we now go through it. Not far up the coast, we came upon our first shipwreck. Due to the Luderitz Bay being shallow, they used barges to load and offload cargo from the biggest ships. This was one of those barges. It was later refitted to harvest black mussels. Now we'll be heading into the dunes, so need to let the tires down even more, 0.8 bar. Then it was playtime. As we crossed a few dunes on our way back to the sea and another shipwreck. This one was the Brazilian oil tanker Frot America. A hundred and ninety three meters long, in twenty thirteen it was being towed to India as scrap when the wind blew it off its moorings outside Luderitz and ended up here. Soon enough, it was time to get back on our way. Then we arrived at our accommodation for the night, a flat area at the bottom of a dune. We set up camp as the sun set behind the dune. When we woke, we found we had a visitor of the four-footed variety. A jackal was checking out our camp. Soon he wandered off, so after a quick breakfast, we struck camp and were on our way.
some entertainment was on the cards this morning. I can't think of a better place to get stuck. As we drove down some of the long slip faces, the desert comes to life with a song of its own. Just listen to it. We're now back on the coast, having passed into the Namib Naukluft National Park. This park includes the Namibian coast, all the way from here to Volfus Bay, and that makes it the largest game park in Africa. We're currently heading for Spencer Bay via Saddle Hill, which we can see in the distance. Before we reached the hill itself, we came to Saddle Hill Mine. Another abandoned mine with half-buried remains of bulldozers and other earth-moving machinery scattered about. And that's what 60 years in the desert will do to you. At Spencer Bay, we stopped for a break and to see Mercury Island, so named because the waves make it shake. Home to penguins, cormorants and gannets, they used to harvest the guano off the island. And the ship Otavi, a steamer with a full load, ran aground here in 1945. The next section allowed all of us to let off some steam. Some were enjoying themselves so much, they got stuck again. And to recover a heavy Nissan patrol from the sand, sometimes the best tool is another Nissan patrol. But no Nissan could rescue this poor Hemsbok. Another shipwreck, we're told. But uh, where's the ship? This was the United Trader, which in 1974 ran aground here with its cargo of 700 tons of explosives. They couldn't leave that amount of explosives lying around, so they decided to blow it up. The pieces are scattered everywhere within a three-kilometer radius.
while we had a little competition to see who could get the furthest up an impossibly steep dune, the tour crew set up our camp. Wind barriers, kitchen, and toilets are all set up. Then, when we get there, all we have to do is set up our tents and relax. There's even a shower. This morning, we also had a visitor. A small sidewinder was inspecting our camp. We are heading into the Devil's Workshop, a tricky part of the desert where it can be slow going. Dunes, recoveries and deep eaves are the order of the day. Here, Werner has to lend a helping hand to get some cars out of the dunes. Did you hear that? That was the sound of a tire de-beading. So now it'll have to be dealt with. A bit of know-how and a bit of air pressure and it's fixed. And then it rained. Yes, it rained on us in the desert. Between that bit of rain and the fog that descended, the character of the sand changed completely. It gave us new ways to get stuck and made the recoveries more interesting too. Another deheed left a Nissan patrol beached. Much like this whale. But then we were able to continue through the fog to Easter Point. Apparently this is a Chevrolet truck, but how they can still tell that is anyone's guess. The rest of the day was spent driving on the beach until fading light made us stop for the night.
After a windy night, we continued up the coast to Sylvia Hill. We stopped at Sylvia Hill, the location of the most northern penguin colony in Africa, and then head inland around the Langevant. The Langevant is a section of the coast where the 200 meter high dunes are right up against the sea, leaving only a small beach. You don't want to get trapped on that beach by the tide since there's no way to get up the dunes. The route around was tough. Pulling into Mia Bay camp was a bit of a relief. We'd made it. Now, Miob is one of the best fishing spots in Namibia. So Tommy, an enthusiastic fisherman, was keen to get his lines in the water. Fish were caught and released while the rest of the group settled in and relaxed. Miob camp supplied breakfast, and soon we were underway again. Not far up the beach, we came to Fisher's Brun. There's a well here with fresh, clean water. The water comes underground from Sosses Flay and the Chowab River. There used to be a farming operation here that supplied fresh produce for the mine workers and even Swakopmund and Walthus Bay. Times we got a little too close for comfort to the waves. The rule is, if you get caught, then stop until the water recedes. Then you can be on your way. Until the next wave, that is. The Edward Bolin was a passenger and cargo ship that ran aground in 1909 on its way to Cape Town. It was transporting mining equipment when it hit the sand in thick fog. Now it lies about 500 meters from the sea.
Some people just get stuck. Others really do a good job. Even Werner's jeep was too light to pull him out. Luckily, another heavy cruiser was on hand. As the afternoon wore on, the wind picked up. And by the time we got to camp, it was strong enough to make pitching tents difficult. The next morning, before we went our separate ways, certificates were handed out. But we didn't need them. The memories of this trip would last a lifetime.